Hello, so I wanna talk about the power of mental rehearsal for staying consistent with your health goals. That's one of the biggest challenges is just being consistent. It's so easy to maybe go two or three weeks really on your game, got these new rituals down, and then what happens? A lot of times there's a party or a vacation or one night you're just so tired and you didn't cook anything and it leads to falling into a slippery slope of having like one binge and then it being like, screw it, screw it all, I failed. I'm just gonna go back to the way I was. And that happens for so many people. And I used to do this all the time. And so the power of mental rehearsal is setting yourself up for success, is using your mind to basically practice rehearsing certain behaviors that you want to adopt. So it's like doing muscle reps, but for your brain. So especially with the challenging situations. So no, notice, this is what I do with clients, is we look back, like, where do you get most tripped up? When does that breaking point happen where you're doing awesome? Like what are the things that trigger you that have you slipping? And so when we pause and can reflect and we set up their week for success, so it's like, hey, what do you have coming up? What potential challenges could pose to derail you this week? And it, often it's things like, for many of my clients, it's things like going to the grocery store. There's so much temptation there, especially if they're in the kind of first couple of weeks of, of detoxing from a lot of processed food, a lot of sh excess sugar, refined foods. And so, what we're doing is navigating the grocery store. Okay, first, like we'll give this as an example. First, what not going to the grocery store hungry is ideal because um, it just makes it so much harder. So like bringing something even with you, keeping something in your purse at all times, like for an Epic bar or an RX bar or something that you can kind of have as an emergency so that you're not going in the cookie aisle or grabbing M&Ms on your way out. And then mentally rehearsing, like what is my best self doing at the grocery store? My best self... She's confident, walks in, knows what she's gonna get, um, isn't even isn't even concerned with the cookies or the, the sugar temptation. And you know, things like having a club soda with you at the grocery store, drink on that while you're there. And so when you get a hit with an impulse, like take a sip. Let that be kind of like your little pause and buffer of like, I'm okay, I'm gonna calm my body down. And a lot of times we work a lot with like, what happens to you in the grocery store when you see maybe M&Ms? Maybe you get like this, that dopamine hit, like, I want this, I want this, noticing what's happening in the body, coming into your breath. And so you can rehearse that in your mind. When I go to the grocery store and I see the M&Ms, what would my best self do? She's gonna pause, take a breath, and realize, you know, I could eat that, but what is that gonna do for me? It's gonna make me crave more sugar. It's gonna make me feel like garbage afterwards. And just kind of playing it out. So it's not denying yourself of that thing, but it's coming back to that responsible higher self, like, hey, well, what is this gonna do for me? And being able to make conscious choice. So rehearsing that, rehearsing it all the way through, getting to the checkout counter, and then walking out of that store feeling so proud of yourself, like, heck yeah, I can navigate a grocery store. And it can seem so, like, not a big deal, but it is for so many people. So if you struggle with that, like, practice. Practice it in your mind, practice it when you show up to the grocery store. One of my clients right now, we're literally having her go to the grocery store solely, not even for groceries, it's just to practice to get those reps in so she can show up and prove to herself and trust herself when she's in a store like that. And then other things, dining out. We, I do this with so many people is we play out. How are you gonna show up at that restaurant? How do you wanna feel when you leave? Because so often, like the old self, what is the old self doing? Okay, the old self kind of doesn't plan, goes to the restaurant, her friend orders an appetizer of fried mozzarella sticks and she ends up eating some and kind of feeling lousy and then like screw it whatever, I'm just gonna eat whatever off the menu and not care, and then ends up overeating. Then after the, after the experience feels so bloated, beating herself up. I mean, y'all, I'm speaking from personal experience too. Um, beating herself up, feeling, needing to take a nap an hour later, and then craving so much junk food later in the night because it was all stimulated by that dining room, dining experience. And then the night, kind of chooses cookies and numbs out to Netflix, wakes up in the morning feeling good, like garbage, doesn't work out, and it's just like this cycle. So that's the old self. Okay, well we're not focused on that. Let's mentally rehearse what the, what the best self does at that restaurant. She looks at the menu beforehand. She picks something that's gonna taste awesome and also serve her body. Maybe something like a, a steak or like a, a piece of salmon and roasted vegetables or fajitas without the tortillas, things like that. Like looking at the menu before, planning that out, making that decision, gets to the restaurant, eats something before so she's not starving and tempted by like chips and bread. Gets to the restaurant, orders a club soda, so she has something kind of like to do while 
other people maybe are ordering an appetizer or maybe she gets a salad or a healthier appetizer alternative so that she can eat that chooses that maybe like shrimp cocktail or something if that's available um had orders what she had planned and then pays attention to her hunger and fullness not getting too overstuffed so she doesn't feel lousy afterwards feels energized from food versus overstuffed and miserable so pays attention to how she's feeling during the meal gets a to-go box puts half of it in to-go box she's sipping on a tea while other people are maybe ordering dessert she's or a decaf coffee and or brings a little piece of dark chocolate in her purse because she knows she's going to be tempted by the dessert so she has that to kind of go to and then she leaves and I'm, and I'm always asking like so how do you feel when you leave that that restaurant after you did all that for yourself and it's like oh I feel so empowered I trust myself I'm like I feel energized I'm ready to go on to the next thing I don't need a nap I'm not craving more sugar I'm not yeah overstepped and tired so it's like great so like this is how it works so you doing this in your mind like even just sitting when you're in line or something, can you play out? Like, how do you want to show up in these challenging scenarios? I do this with my clients for when they're going on vacation. What can we pack? How do you want to show up? Plan your indulgences. Cool, you're going to Disney World. You don't have to deprive yourself the whole time, but like plan out the worth it foods so that you're not, it's not just this some like radical binge for seven days and then you feel like death when you get back. Like, and, and don't even enjoy your time there because you're so fogged out and bloated and tired and not being able to be present with your kids because you're just shaming yourself or just feeling so bad in your body. Like, how is that the best vacation? And, but instead being able to like eat mindfully throughout and then planning out like a couple indulgences that are really worth it. Like for one of my clients, it was this special ice cream place that they always go in Disney world. And so it was like, awesome eat really well, like eat normal, like high protein breakfast, like really good quality lunch. And then, you know, when you go get that ice cream, it's going to be so special because you didn't just numb out all day on like garbage food. Like that's the worth it food that you can slow down with, sit, eat it and like enjoy it and then not feel guilty afterwards because you planned for it. That was your indulgence. And yeah, maybe, okay, maybe you get like a stomach ache after because of the dairy and you don't, that doesn't serve you. But then you can be like, okay, was it worth it? Maybe it was. I can ride this stomach ache out. Or maybe it's like, you know what? That wasn't really worth it. But it's learning the foods with your body, planning it out, making conscious decisions. And that's what all of this is about, is that being able to make a conscious decision versus riding impulses versus, versus just numbing out with food, which can be so toxic. And it's not only toxic to your weight and your health. It's toxic to your energy. It's toxic to the way you show up in the world. You are not your best self if you're eating foods that are bringing your body down. So it's using mental rehearsal to set yourself up for success and to train your brain again how to show up with food. How do you want to show up with food? And that's all you really have to ask. Any challenging situation that you can like look at in the future, just be like, okay, how would my best self show up for this? What would I want to see myself do? What would I be so proud of myself for? doing if I looked back or if I was watching myself on a television screen, I always do this with my clients. I'm like, okay, if you're watching yourself on a movie screen, how do you want to see yourself show up? Even things with self-talk. How would you speak to yourself? How would you, how do you want to, um, how do you want to show up at night, nighttime after a long day of work? What would you want to see yourself do? Would you want to see yourself sit on the couch and down four bags of chips? What is that gonna do? Like, how are you gonna feel after that? And it's not to shame you and for that. It's just like, what would you feel if you did that? What would you feel? Like lousy, like crappy in my body. I'd wake up feeling groggy. Okay, well, what would what would you rather see? I'd rather see myself, you know, eat a healthy meal for dinner. Go if I sit on the couch, like have a cup of tea and just like sip on it and and read or do something, you know, productive and or go to have a go to bed early, be able to wake up feeling energized. And like, what does that feel like? Oh, it feels awesome. I wake up and I'm not puffy from food. I'm not like hung over basically from a sugar coma. And I feel good. I step on the scale in the morning and it's gone down three pounds and that's super exciting and motivating. And so it's just like playing that out in your mind and then letting that play out when it's, and then it's actually happening. You've done the reps in your mind already. So your brain's already primed to know what the behavior it wants to do. So that's what, where this mental rehearsal comes out. It's like your brain doesn't know the difference between you imagining it in your head and actually playing it out in real life. So anytime you have space, close your eyes and imagine your best self. How does your best self show up? And you can use this beyond food. I use this all the time when I'm about to go to my Wim Hof group. I'm like, how do I want to show up for this? How's the best Ellie showing up for these people? 
or just anything in life. Mental rehearsal is so powerful. Any behavior change that you want to make, focus on the new behavior. Play it out in your mind. Be the actor in your movie and show up for yourself. And just be gentle with yourself too. Allow yourself to you know, make mistakes and learn from them and try again. Again and again and again. Especially on this food journey and health journey, slips are bound to happen. So it's how radically compassionate can you be to yourself and realize that the, the next moment is a new moment for you to choose again. And that's like the mantra of the 21 day reset. It's like release perfection, focus on up leveling, forgive yourself as fast as you can if you make a mistake, learn from it, tune in, and then choose consciously. Like that's the muscle we're building, conscious eating, conscious choosing, so that you feel empowered, you feel in control of what you're doing. You're not being run by food, you're not being run by sugar. Because that sucks. I ran, was run by sugar, consuming my thoughts for the first 25 years of my life. And it was awful. And so feeling back in the driver's seat is so awesome. And there's so much freedom in that. So I hope that for all of you. And if you need help with this, reach out. This is what I do. I'd love to support you. And if you want, you can join our 21-day reset. It starts January 10th. It's so much fun. And I teach you all this. And we are rehearsing things. And... It's really training you for after these 21 days to have new rituals and new habits to keep going. Like this isn't just some 21 day crash diet where you end up going back to old behaviors afterwards because it's miserable and you're feeling deprived. No, this is like training wheels to set you free and go after the 21 days to want to keep going. So anyways, I love you guys. Mentally rehearse your life. So, and, and let me know if you need anything. Let me know how it goes.